Ready to see what's packed into this episode of Juiced? We've got Cartoon Dave hitting the whiteboard with another cartooning masterclass. Some incredible cute, fluffy and scaly animals from Queensland Zoo and a visit from a few of the best hockey players in the country. Roll tape. I'm Shayla and welcome to Juice TV. We're on location at the Lady Salento Children's Hospital and we have a great episode for you today. I'm really looking forward to doing some cartooning with Cartoon Day, but before that we have a visit from the Queensland Zoo. Hey, I'm Jared. And I'm Beck, and boy do we have some cool animals for you today. Jared, thank, thanks for coming and bringing Simba. What's the difference between a dog and a dingo? Well, dogs we keep around our house and they live at home with us, don't they? And they're domesticated, they're very used to people. Dingoes are like a wild dog, so they live out there in packs and we don't normally have them around people. They're very shy and timid and they don't come up to people. Simba does though, doesn't he? So, how is Simba so playful and can come to the hospital? We've had Simba since he was only a little puppy, so he was only six weeks old, and he was around people all the time, and he'd get to come out and play, meet people, go for a drive in the car, and all that different noise and experiences. It's all taught him to be very brave. So he's always been used to people, he loves people. And what does dingoes eat? Well, dingoes in the wild like to eat lots of different things, usually anything they can find. So it might be kangaroo, or it might be other small animals, little birds, other marsupials. But in the zoo, Simba likes to eat dog biscuits and bones and just about anything he can chew. And even like sweet things like peanut butter. Are they endangered species? They are in the wild and dingoes are endangered and there's not many left. And it's mainly because people misunderstand them and don't realise uh, not to go near the dingoes. Dingoes are shy and we find them on Fraser Island. So if you are out holidaying and you do know there's dingoes out there, uh, just stay away from them and don't go up to them because they won't be friendly like Simba here. And they'll just stay away from you too. Look, who brought here? I've got some baby blue tongue lizards here today. Back, what, what does lizard eat? These guys eat snails, that's their favourite food. They also eat insects and crickets. What else do they eat? They also eat carrot, apple, grass, the greens. They're licking. They're licking. Yeah, see how they're tasting the air? You see that blue tongue? That's like they're, they're tasting your arm. Yeah, they're seeing what's out and about. And that's how they get their name, by that big blue tongue that's coming out. But can I have a cat? You sure can. Where do you find the blue tongue lizard? Well, you can find them in your garden and all over Australia, mostly on the eastern coastline. But you might have one in your garden and not know about it. They like to burrow down. Thank you, Beck. That's okay. Hi, Beck. This is Kita the koala. Yes, this is Kita. When was she born? She was born eight years ago. So 2006, Six. Kita was born. Can we have a pet? You sure can. What does she feel like? She feels like a sheep. Nice and woolly? Yeah. She has three layers of fur. Oh. Three that must layers? Keep her really three warm. layers. It does, and it keeps her nice and dry from the rain as well. So what does the top coat do? Like, what does the fur do? So it acts like a raincoat. So what happens, she'll curl in a ball in the tree if it's raining, and the rain and the water will stay on the top coat there. I've noticed Kita's got some sharp claws. Why's that? Kita needs sharp claws for climbing all the trees. So they climb thick trees and really thin trees. And if you have a look, she's got two thumbs. So you know we've got one thumb? Yeah. She's got two. And we use our thumb a lot for eating and picking things up. These two thumbs help her climb all the trees. And she can actually climb a broomstick handle. She's that good at climbing. Wow. Yeah. We really have to look after our koalas, right? 
we do. They're very special and they're only found in Australia, so we have to make sure we look after them and look out for them on the roads and know what our cats and dogs are doing at night time. So if our koalas do come down to the ground to switch trees, that they're not getting attacked by our animals. It's very important. Thanks so much for bringing all the animals you brought here today. Not a problem, it was our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks guys. Alright legends, it's time for quick questions. So let's find out more about our host, Shayla. I'm 10 years old. My favourite sport is trampoline and I'm level 4. And my goal for next year is to represent Queensland. My favourite animals are piglets and I have two at home. Their names are Holly and Jojo. The grossest food in the world is sardines because they're gross, disgusting and they stink. I wouldn't like to lick my toes so I guess I would have to pick my nose. I'm really good at doing crafts, art and decorating cupcakes. If I could travel anywhere in the world, I would go to Disneyland because of all the fun characters and the fun rides. My favourite song is Lay Me Down by Sam Smith because it's really relaxing. My best party trick is my flexibility. If I could have any superpower, it would be telekinesis because I could trick my friends. But if you don't know what telekinesis is, it's to move things with your mind. So now you've met me, let's go meet Cartoon Dave to learn how to draw a cool cat. Hey there guys, I'm Cartoon Dave and today I would like to show you how we can draw some extremely cool cartoon cats. You know cats, they're those little furry things, they're awesome. So grab your pencils, grab some paper and come on over this way. Okay, so with cartoon cats, first of all, we're going to start with five very, very simple shapes. Let me show you what those five shapes are. So on the board here, I'm going to go a circle, that's nice and tricky, and a dot. That's a straight line. There are two more shapes. One of them is a bendy thing and the other one is a pointy thing. So these five shapes are the only shapes we're going to use to create awesome cartoon cats. Now with your cats and with any cartoon character, a great place to start is with the eyes. I love starting with the eyes. It just kind of makes sense. So let's kick on over here and we're going to begin with nice little round eyes. So grab a circle and plonk a dot inside and another circle and another dot. And those there, they have the coolest cartoon eyes ever. Universally brilliant and awesomely simple. Now cats, they have those little triangly noses. So let's go a straight line and a pointy thing and we'll go dump de dump de dump like that. And then cats have little bendy, sort of like W mouths. So let's use little bendy shapes like that. That's exciting. And let's give this cat a bit of a square head. So let's go, well, kind of square. Let's do a straight line across the top of its head and little pointy ears as well. So pointy shape. And we're going to make this cat just a tiny bit furry as well. So we might go pointy, pointy, pointy like that. Pointy, pointy, pointy. And then finish this guy off with a nice bendy shape for the bottom of its head. Yeah, like that. Oh, hey, probably needs some whiskers too. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. So that there, that's kind of a cool cat. It's nice, but is that the only way that we can draw a cat? I think not. Let me show you a different one. See, over here, we're going to start with some different eyes. And again, they're just going to be using these five simple shapes. Let's go with, oh, let's do straight line and a bendy thing with a dot. And straight line with a bendy thing and a dot. And straight away, they're kind of angry eyes because the eyes are pointing down towards the middle of the face, which is cool. And then if we just go triangly thing like that again, that's nice for a nose. But this time, let's go whoosh, big, chunky mouth. And as well as that, we can add some teeth. Let's go for pointy teeth. Let's add some big psycho pointy teeth like those, which is nice. Hey, look, we can even do some bendy lines under the eyes. And let's make those eyebrows with straight lines. Make them big and thick and chunkus. Look at that, yay. And then for this guy's head, why don't we give this cat maybe a square or a rectangular shape head, just to be weird. Let's go. <laughs> That's nice. And then maybe a bendy thing and ears like that. And whiskers. These whiskers could be jagged looking things, so straight lines like that. Is that a beautiful cat? It's probably not the most attractive cat you've ever seen, but even though it looks different to that cat, they're both still cats because they both have bits that cats have, which is kind of nice. 
So on your page, with your pencil, anytime you like, have a little bit of fun, try and draw some cats, maybe draw a cat with an oval-shaped head or a triangle head. The cool thing is, with cartooning, there are no rules. So until next time, I'm Cartoon Dave, scribble on and have a lot of fun with your drawings. you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. So up next, our very special friend Demi is back and she's talking to Nurse Gemma. Hi, I'm Demi. Now it's time to meet Nurse Gemma. Hi! How Hi are you Demi. doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. So what are you doing here at the hospital? Um, so I'm one of the oncology nurses here. So I see kids like you every day who come in for chemo to see the doctor, maybe have some blood transfusions, some medicine. Um, so I help do that. So I just check your temperature. Great, all done. So what's your favourite thing? Uh, my favourite thing about my job is meeting all the kids and working with the kids. You guys are all so funny, you have great personalities. It makes for a great day every day I come to work. Yeah, and we all have beautiful nails. You do. <laughs> Very jealous. <laughs> all right, Gemma, now it's time for the hard-hitting questions. What was the last song that you sung and danced to? It was On the Way to Work This Morning in the Car with Sugar by Maroon 5. A little dance and tried to hit all those high notes in there. <laughs> it was super fun. <laughs> what about you? What was the last song that you sang? Um, probably Let It Go. Out of the movie Frozen. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do all the moves? Yeah, oh, yeah. of course. Gotta get into it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, what does everyone who works with you know you for? Um, definitely, I'm known as a chocoholic, so I'm always out the back in the chocolate drawer, stealing <laughs> chocolate. I've got chocolate in my pocket all the time. If you want chocolate, you come and see me and I'll oh, give you some. <laughs> so, who's your favourite superhero? Superhero? Oh, maybe Superman, Superman? I'd say. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, he's Leaves, pretty good. Leaves uh, secret double life, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So if you had a superpower, what would it be and what would you do with it? Um, it would be probably time travel. That would be pretty cool. And I could go back to the 50s maybe and do a bit of like swing dancing and a bit of cooking or checking out some like 50s diners. That would be pretty cool. Oh, that'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, Gemma. It was so nice to meet you. No worries, Demi. I love getting to know all you guys, so it's been great. Come on, let's go get those chocolates. Yes, let's go. <laughs> thanks, Demi and Nurse Gemma. I would like to say a big thanks to all the nurses who look after me on Level 8A. Let's throw to our roving reporter, Angie, who's meeting some awesome hockey players and learning some cool tricks with sticks. Yes, Shayla, I'm here with some pretty fierce girls right now from the Queensland Academy of Sport. Hi, I'm Ash. I'm a defensive midfielder. My career highlights would be playing for the Queensland Scorchers in Hobart and winning a gold medal. My career goals would be one day playing in the Dutch League in Holland and winning a gold medal for Australia, whether it be at the Com Games or in Olympics. Hi, my name's Jamie Stone and I'm a defender. Some career highlights for me so far have been winning under 21 nationals in Darwin and also then debut that year for the Scorchers and win that as well. That was pretty amazing. And some goals that I would like to do is to hopefully one day represent Australia and potentially win a gold medal. That'd be pretty good. Hi, my name's Beck. Um, the playing position I play in is the attacking midfielder. Um, my biggest highlight is being presented the Australian Hockey Roos uniform and playing in front of my family. 
Um, and my goal for this year is I've just had a full knee reconstruction, so coming back from that for the second time round and coming back to play hockey at a high level. Hi, I'm Britt, I'm a striker. My career highlight was winning a gold medal against New South Wales in the final and winning 5-2. And my career goal is to win a gold medal for Australia and to help Kedrin, my club team, to their first ever premiership. What is hockey? Hockey is an 11 side sport, um, both men and women can play it. Um, there's usually one goalkeeper, there's a few defenders, midfielders and strikers, very similar to soccer. Currently the Australian women's side, the Hockey Roos, they're ranked second in the world and the Australian men's, the Kookaburras, they're ranked one in the world. So we're doing very well for hockey. Um, hopefully at the next Olympics we'll bring home two gold medals. Beck is now going to show us how to dribble a ball. Alrighty, so what you need to do is make sure the ball's staying on the stick at all times and we just drag it across and then we change the direction of our stick so it goes over the ball because remember you can only use the flat side of your stick and then you drag it back across, back and forth. This is a really good skill to learn and practice when you want to play at the top level to be able to eliminate and beat the defenders. If you can do this with speed, you'll get past them every time. It looks so easy when you did it. <laughs> So remember to twist, use this hand to twist the stick across and then bring it back this way, yep. And back again, now you get the hang of it. And move your feet with the ball. Who can play hockey, Ash? Um, so there's no real age limit with hockey. It's both men and women, women, sorry. And you can start, I started from around the age of four and it goes all the way up to vets. What's the best part about the game? I would have to say uh, the friends you make and just the fun you have playing the game. So Ash, what's the proper way to hold a hockey stick? So you have your left hand high, your right hand low at the bottom of the grip. Now you can only hit the ball with the flat side of your stick. So if you want to come around and have a go, I'll hold this for you. So it's your left hand high, perfect. Now this part of your stick's where you hit the ball with. Perfect! What's the difference between ice hockey and field hockey? Well, field hockey is played on AstroTurf and grass and also we play with a round ball, not a puck. What's your advice for, for kids that want to be good at hockey? Um, lots of practice, practicing skills, your speed and endurance. So Britt, you're going to show us how to do some juggling, right? Yeah, so basically you just tap the ball on your stick as many times as you can and this helps with hand-eye coordination so you can try this one at home. How many times can you do this in a row? Um, I've actually never counted, but I'd say probably a minute or so. Yeah. So, Britt, I'm not even going to try that. It looks really difficult. Well, practice makes perfect, so keep trying it at home. OK. They say hockey is one of the most dangerous sports. What do you say about that? Yes, hockey can be a little bit dangerous, but as long as you wear your protective equipment and play within the rules, you should be OK. How do we avoid injuries? Well, if you wear your shin guards, your mouth guard, and us girls here, we play with a glove, and all those things help us to stay safe while we play. OK, so Jamie, what are you going to show us today? Well, I'm going to show you jinking, and this is a way you can eliminate a player on the hockey field. So I've got my defender, I come up, and then I jink it over their stick and then run after it. So Jamie, that's a pretty good skill. So how long did it take you to master it? Um, it took me a little bit, but by practicing it heaps at home, it made it a lot easier to pick it up quicker. Thank you, ladies, for showing us all your awesome skills at Juice TV. Thanks, Angie. And on behalf of us and the Queensland Academy of Sport and the Queensland Scorchers, we'd like to give you a shirt which we've signed just to say thanks for having us on Juice TV. Wow, thank you guys. I've got a couple of jokes before you go. What tea do hockey players drink? Oh, I don't know. What tea? <laughs> Penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Cinderella get kicked off the hockey team? Why did she? Because she ran away from the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it from us from the green. Back to you, Shayla. Nice job, Angie. And a big thanks to the hockey superstars for teaching us some awesome tricks. So now, let's go see what other creatures visited the hospital from the Queensland Zoo. Hi, I'm Emma. And I'm Danny, and we're from Queensland Zoo. 
And these are some of our farmyard friends. We've got Peppa Pig at the Silky Chicken, Clancy the Sheep. We've got Hulk the Silky Chicken and we've got Sid and Ellie the Goats. And of course, Jay our pig. the sheep what was it like oh uh, well it, it was kind of like it's kind of like Millie eating the whole hand of me <laughs> <laughs> lucky you didn't have a little nibble then hey <laughs> yeah and Lewis the chicken whisperer oh my gosh look you're so color coordinated today do you have chicks as pets yeah we have four there you go that would make a lot of sense do you know what we've called this big chicken here Hawk. nice one hey yeah I really like oh, this big chicken because he uh, likes me and he just stands on me. Yeah. He stands on my foot. What type is this chicken? This one, the big one, here's a silky. So a silky has grown, his, his feathers grow fluffy instead of like this little fella is a Sussex and he's going to have hard feathers. Why do you make the chickens green? Why do we make them green? It makes them look a bit cooler, hey, a bit funky. We have to lice spray them every month with a spray. And what we do is just put a bit of food colouring in there so it doesn't hurt them. We spray it on them every month and we give them some funky colours so that they look really cool. Oh, different. cool. I've got chickens too. You've I've got chickens? I've got four chickens. Four chickens. And what sort of chickens do you have at home? I don't know what type they are. They're just good laying ones? My one, my one is Spotty. Spotty chicken. No, he's, he's called Spottles. And he's got lot, lot, oh, he's black with lots of white spots on him. You know, Silkies make the great pets because they're very placid. As you can see, they just sit nice and still and they quite yeah. like attention. They also don't fly like other chooks, so they don't need a big fence like um, other chooks do. Your chooks probably need a big fence. We, we have a roof. You got a roof on yours? If you have a silky, he needs a roof for shelter, but he won't fly over a fence. We feed our chicken scraps, is that good? Yeah, some scraps are good. So lots of greens, you can give them greens and fruit scraps. Sometimes scraps like bread doesn't, isn't very good for them. And um, oh, yeah, and also meat isn't good for them as well. What do you feed yours? We feed ours on a good quality grain. So they need lots of grains. They also need stones because in this, the front of their... They eat stones. They eat stones because in the front here, this is called their crop. And inside their crop, they eat little stones and that crushes, helps crush up all the grains. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they get, also they get fresh greens every day. I'm gonna call him... Cool Guy. Cool Guy. I think that's a good name. Yeah. This guy cool. can hang out with Hulk, hey? We, we have some chickens, but they took the rooster away. Ah, oh, we've got a rooster here today. This is Hulk. So, Wyatt, you've seen all of our animals that we've brought today. Which one is your favourite? All of them. All of them. What if you could pick one? Do you want to I, go, if you I could can't. go pat one right now, which one would you want to go pat? I'll pat all of them. You'll pat all of them? I think we should go pat all of them then. And you're going to hold him nice and close. Oh, you've done this before. So I had to bring Clancy home every night with me to give him a bottle through the night. Sid's also, he still gets a bottle. Animals from apart from chickens, do you have? We we had some cheap chicks, but they're grown up now. We have ducks and kangaroos. Ducks and kangaroos. Would you know we at have... the zoo we got ducks and kangaroos too? And um, we at, um, at our house we seen we seen baby kangaroos. Baby kangaroos. Do you know what a baby kangaroo is called? What? It lives in its mum's pouch. It's called a joey. And I heard you've got a pig. Yep. What's your pig's name? Patsy. Patsy. That's a good name. And is it a boy pig or a girl pig? A girl. A girl pig. And how big is Hutchie? Wow, that's huge. I heard he's about 200 kilos. Yeah. Wow, we've got a little pig. Have you seen our pig, Jay? Are you running around? He's only a baby. How big do you think he might get? I don't know. He's going 
as big as Hachi. That's it for today's show. See you next time. Bye. Remember, guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also, head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.